I'm David R. Jones of the Community Service Society. An un estimated 100,000 jobs were lost in the months following the terrorist attacks of September 11th. On today's edition of the Urban Agenda, we'll talk about the urgent need to create jobs for working people. Joining me first is my CSS colleague, Mark Levitan, who is our senior policy analyst. Mark, welcome. Thank you, David. Uh, even before September 11th, we had a recession going, wasn't that right? Yes, I mean, September 11th obviously had a devastating impact on the city economy, but to understand where we are, where we're going to be going, and what we need to do about it, we have to sort of roll the tape back a few months and, and see that the city economy was already heading south. Um, the unemployment rate in the city bottomed out in July, and by September, even before uh, the impact of the attacks was measured in the data we see, uh, the unemployment rate had gone up by nearly 1 percent. There were 75,000 fewer New Yorkers employed in September of 2001 than there were the year before. So the economy was weakening before September 11th. Okay, now we fast forward. When, when the attacks occurred on the World Trade Center, what did that do to the economy then? Well, that sent um, a weakened economy into a tailspin. So the unemployment rate is now uh, just under 7 percent, 6.9 percent. We've lost about 100,000 jobs in the city in, uh, in the two months that we have data for uh, since September. So we had a, a weakening economy um, being sent into a tailspin. Um, job losses uh, spread from one sector of the economy through many other sectors, and that you know, tends to have a multiplier effect. Well, which, which sectors were particularly bad, uh, badly hurt? Well, we should begin at the top with finance, yeah. which was already weak because of the slow stock market, uh, the uh, decline in um, computing, and the bursting of the dot-com bubble. So there was weakness there already, and then, of course, September 11th added to that. So we have finance, the industries that serve finance, and then um, the industries that depend on all that kind of spending and the travel, the business travel and the tourism that goes with it. So, you know, entertainment, arts, eating and drinking establishments, air transportation, ground transportation, um, all those industries have been severely impacted. Well, some of the things we're looking at seem to indicate that this, uh, this hit on the economy and job loss is not uh, equally distributed among different income levels. Well, one of the things we, we saw when we looked at who perished in the World Trade Center was that even in finance, where we think of people making six and money. seven you know, figure eight salaries, there were a lot of people working in the mail rooms, in janitorial work, um, clerical work, uh, doing security work, who perished along with that. Uh, that industry and many of the other industries that we're talking about employ low-wage workers. So of the, there's 100,000 job loss, uh, of those workers, what percentage of them, for instance, are people earning modest incomes? Or well, it's been estimated that about 60 percent that of that 100,000 were people who were earning less than $11 an hour. So even though the public has some sense that this is basically a middle and upper class impact, this is obviously reached down into the, to the heart of the working poor. This affects everyone. Well, let's talk about uh, the impacts on the working poor and what this means, uh, for instance, for the rest of the city. 100,000 job loss, 60 uh, percent, 60,000 uh, unskilled or low-skilled workers. What impact would that have on the city? And if it continues, uh, what long-term impact should we be concerned about? Well, we have uh, a sort of confluence of, of things going on here. Uh, one impact, of course, a uh, job loss has on the city is means that there's less revenue coming in for the city budget. Right. So we now have a $4 billion hole in the New York City uh, budget. We have a 6 or $7 billion hole in New York State's budget. There are going to be severe budget cuts. There's going to be declining services for everyone in the city, yeah. uh, not just the poor and low-income populations. So that's going to affect us all. Um, at the same time that the city and the state have less resources to serve the city, something else is going to be happening specifically uh, really to, to the low-income part of the city. Many of the people who are losing their jobs now 
were the success stories of welfare reform. Mm. These were the people who came off the rolls and were able to get work in the low-wage service industries like that we've just been describing. Mm. Those people are now losing their jobs and many of them are going to come back knocking on the door of the welfare system because they have no alternative. So we have fewer resources and greater need. Well, what do you think the quality of life impact? Uh, say you're in the middle class in New York. What it, well, we're very sorry for all these poor people. Would this impact uh, people of moderate means in the city of New York whose jobs haven't been affected? Should they care? Well, they're going to need to care because uh, what government is going to be able to do for them is going to change. There are going to be more demands in the government coming from the poor, and there are less, there, there's less resources there because the economy is not generating the income that, uh, that it, we've been accustomed to. The cuts that are going to come down are going to affect everyone, um, particularly in the areas of children, after-school programs, arts, cultural activities, the state of our parks, the cleanliness of the streets. Um, life is not going to feel that plush here. Yeah. I don't think many New Yorkers recognize that the reason the parks have become so pristine in New York actually were people who were on welfare were cleaning them almost exclusively. That had become the workforce. But let's talk. In the, uh, the United States, I think, and you know, the business pages, they're all talking that uh, we're hoping for a soft landing in this recession, that it'll be a mild recession. Two things. Uh, what, is, what is your view on that? And secondly, if it is a short recession, does that necessarily mean that New York will have a short recession? Well, let me begin by saying <laughs> that I'm not, not an economic forecaster. It's an occupation with a very bad reputation. I, I don't want to go there. But I can, you can tell you, I can tell you what the forecasters are saying. And the forecasters at the moment are, the consensus is pretty optimistic that in the second half of the current year, the economy is going to begin to turn around. But even the op optimistic forecasters don't see a very robust uh, recovery at first. And uh, the reason for that is uh, that consumers are just not in a position to fuel the recovery in the way that we've had in, in prior recoveries. So we're not going to see that jump in consumer spending. Uh, we may see the economy expand, but we're still going to see very high levels of joblessness uh, nationally and in New York City. Thanks. We'll be back to continue our program right after this. You don't have to like me. Or you can. <laughs> you don't have to run with me. You really don't have to run away from me. And we're not all that different. I like good food. Good music. I want a good job. I want my kids to live in a world where they are safe and loved and respected for who they are. You don't have to like me. But if you talk to me... You might. We can end prejudice if we talk to each other. Call. Call. Tell us what you'd do. Together we can build one America. Welcome back to The Urban Agenda. Along with my colleague Mark Levitan, we are now joined by Adam Friedman, the Executive Director of the New York Industrial Retention Network. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us what is the New York Industrial Retention Network. It's a citywide economic development organization that was set up to strengthen the manufacturing sector and to save manufacturing jobs throughout the city. I think most of the viewers and, uh, thought manufacturing in New York City, is there much manufacturing left? There are well over 200,000 people employed in manufacturing. And, and who, would, who would these people be? What kind of industries are we talking about? There's a tremendous apparel industry, tremendous printing industry. There's about 15,000 people employed in food production, not restaurants, but right. food production. Um, it really runs the gamut. And in terms of the workforce, the composition of the workforce, um, it's a big immigrant population. Mm -hmm. There are um, about half the workforce is probably Hispanic, um, probably a quarter Asian, and, and a quarter black. And is this a growing sector or, or one that's in contra it's contracting it's, or it's what's happening? It's tremendously over the past right. three or four decades. It's, it's relatively stable now. I think we've really kind of reduced it to its core. Right. And uh, the companies that are here, the people that are here, want to stay here. They're not leaving because they're being lured or being enticed to come to another jurisdiction. They're, they're here, and if they leave, it's really be largely because they can't um, find space. That's a primary concern for them. Right. 
I, how can they be competitive against other parts of the country where land is cheaper, where, you know, we're always told that manufacturing, it's much easier to set up manufacturing? Well, that's, that's true. And they can't compete if, it's if competition is defined as price. What they compete on is having better skills, having a quicker response time, being able to combine, in a way, both manufacturing and a service where they're really integrated into the needs, into the process of their, of their clients. Mm -hmm. Mark and I have just obviously been talking about the issue of the recession uh, that, that was really made much worse by the World Trade Center attack. How in the sector you're looking at is, is, is that playing itself out? Well, it's really been severely impacted, certainly in uh, apparel. There are about 20,000 production jobs in Chinatown. Chinatown was basically shut down for well over a month, and the trucking is still very, very impacted. The printing industry was severely impacted because of drop in financial services, um, the drop in the demand for, for printing of financial materials. But it's really been across the board. Um, we're working with a number of baking companies now. Well, they sold into the hotels and sold to restaurants that were either impacted by the, the destruction of the World Trade Center or by the drop in tourism. Mark, we've been talking, obviously, in our, in our recent policy paper that we released, Back to Work, about how we can try to shorten this recession, or at least to ease it, uh, for particularly low-wage uh, people. How would the manufacturing sector fit in into steps we could take to, to make this less of a burden on both all New Yorkers and, of course, the low-wage worker? Well, as Adam just mentioned, uh, manufacturing provides employment for, um, for a largely immigrant workforce, um, people not making uh, a heck of a lot of money, um, and people without a college education. And these are the people that we are worried about um, in this situation. Um, manufacturing needs to be preserved. And I think that's a long-term uh, process. Uh, what I'm concerned about right now is uh, building a bridge between where we are today in this recession and a period of recovery that we can all look forward to and which ought to include the manufacturing sector as well. And what we at the Community Service Society have been talking about is a plan for uh, large-scale, publicly subsidized transitional employment, um, something that would create um, jobs, income, work experience um, for 50,000 um, unemployed New Yorkers. So some of the people who are actually getting laid off in manufacturing are going to have some difficulty in the interim as, uh, until that sector begins to recover. Right, that's certainly true. Uh, what about the issue, uh, they're talking about all sorts of infrastructure improvements in lower Manhattan. I haven't heard much about talking about making the city uh, more user friendly for manufacturing actually. Uh, is that possible? We're talking about $20 billion coming in for New York infrastructure. Would there be parts of that that could, could be attractive to the manufacturing sector and obviously bring more jobs? Sure. I don't see any or very little of that money going directly to manufacturers. Absolutely. There actually were some that were impacted. There were a number of printers who were basically wiped out, whose plants were destroyed right. um, in that immediate vicinity. But let me give you one suggestion, because you were talking about sort of the transition or the bridge. Yeah. What if some of that went to local procurement? What if there were some effort to use the the demand that's going to be created by this rebuilding effort to foster local business. We have been talking about that. In other cities, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we've gotten used to New York not leading the way as it once did, uh, have uh, first source uh, agreements uh, that basically if you have a major reconstruction ca uh, project, in this case Boston mm -hmm. and its big dig, which has been going on for years, probably it's going to be uh, somewhat of the same magnitude of mm -hmm. re rebuilding uh, around the World Trade Center has a first source agreement that gives preference, obviously, to New York City businesses and New York City uh, employees. Could something like that work? Certainly. And there, there have been, there is legislation, or there are laws on the books up in Albany that do require a certain amount of work, a uh, certain amount of goods uh, purchased by the state to be from local companies. Virtually everything is still made in New York, whether it's desks or chairs or wall partitions or windows and doors. That can all be bought that can all be manufactured in New York City. Every office tenant is going to be need, is going to need a new computer. There are computers still manufactured in New York really? City. New York City, and this is kind of a bootstrapping argument, just to to use our economy to pull ourselves up a little bit. New York economy, if if it was an independent country, 
would have the 14th or 15th largest economy in the world. So if we can just rechannel channel a little of, of that activity back home, it would be a tremendous boost. Well, let's, let's just pursue that uh, for a second. I mean, it's always been sort of an article of faith uh, that uh, manufacturing is dirty, uh, that it really is not appropriate for a world-class city, that we're basically a, an office city, uh -huh. uh, um, an arts city. Uh, is there a place for expanding ma manufacturing, not just keeping it static? Uh, are there some kinds of manufacturing that would be perfectly appropriate for Oh, sure, like and I, I think the, the vision you just described of manufacturing really was a, a vision of the past, and the manufacturers who survived are very clean, and they're very arts-related, they're very design-oriented. I could take you to factories now, that, jewelry factories that are on Madison in the 40s, when until very recently there was a jewelry factory on, Mad on Fifth Avenue and 57th. Um, they can fit in. The question is, can they afford to fit in? Um, you know, and that really requires a change in city policy to develop communities where manufacturers won't be priced out. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the wage level of people in, in the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of income are they to earning? Average wages in manufacturing over 25000 a year. That's, that's uh, much higher than... That contrasts that with retailing, which is about mm -hmm. fifteen, I think, fifteen or 16000 it's a very heavily unionized segment of the economy. About half the jobs in manufacturing, I'd say, are union jobs, so they, they provide health coverage and other benefits. Mark, that obviously goes to the issue. We, as an organization trying to serve the poor, clearly are looking for uh, wage increases for people at the bottom. Uh, w in terms of the low-wage workers we're looking at, their average wage is much lower than that. Right. I mean, for someone without a college education, being employed in manufacturing is a better place to work than in the service sector. Uh, we've been talking to people, obviously, that eight fifty an hour is not unusual mm -hmm. for low-wage workers. Uh, obviously, what would the skill situation be if you could expand manufacturing? What would that do for the availability of uh, low and, and semi-skilled jobs? Well, if you can create the, the demand for those right. people, Manufacturers do tend to train, do their own training, they recruit from within, they move up from within. We have a whole series of programs to upgrade the skills of the workforce so that people com can come in as entry-level workers. You know, they may start off pushing a broom, but they can, they can move up. Um, we're d finishing up a program now, kind of a pilot effort, to provide some training in graphic arts and printing, and the entry-level uh, wage in this, when they acquire this particular skill, be eighteen dollars an hour. Now you've seen over the past uh, four or five actually longer period of time major tax incentives going to keep uh, very high-end businesses <coughs> from leaving the city of New York. Has that kind of thing gone on uh, to keep manufacturing particularly in the city of New York? Uh, certainly not. And I, I, One of the issues there is it's kind of a big business versus small business. The average manufacturer in New York City employs about 35 people is a small family-owned company, probably has gross receipts under $5 million. And it's sort of understandable that they can't negotiate a big tax deal. And it, I'm not sure it's efficient for the city to do that. It's just the process of negotiating would be too difficult. And really, the city needs to move away from the kind of um, negotiated case-by-case -case, uh, tax incentive package to a more uh, inclusive economic development process that's able to uh, reach out and be accessible to the small business community. Okay, this is the opportunity. We have a new mayor uh, with a relatively uh, blank slate. Mm -hmm. We don't know, uh, other than he's very open to new ideas. You have a new city council. You, and representing your organization, what would you want uh, from this city government in terms of trying to help the manufacturing sector grow? Well, first of all, it's kind of an equal playing field. What you described before, that some people get certain tax benefits and others don't, what does that do? That creates a very unlevel playing field in the city's economy. And the city has to return to the basics. You know, the most important economic development services are really provided by the Board of Ed, by the police department, and by the Department of Sanitation. You know, just basic municipal services. And then after that, I think it's sort of recognizing that we need a diverse economy. We have an extraordinarily diverse workforce. And once you recognize the importance of that diversity in your economy, uh, I think the, zo the specific zoning changes, the specific financing will, will follow. 
Since September 11th, has your organization been taking specific steps, uh, looking at worker retraining and, and skills? We have two initiatives that have really developed in response to 9-11. To and the first is this Made in New York initiative, which we began to, to discuss, to encourage the procurement of locally manufactured goods. That could have a tremendous impact, stimulating economic activity in manufacturing and creating jobs. And the second is be just beginning to reach out to uh, the manufacturers and see those who are still growing. We have yesterday had a discussion, kind of a roundtable discussion with six companies, a printer, um, a food company, uh, a woodworking company, an apparel company, and they were all prepared to, to keep growing. They were all growing companies before 9-11. They've continued to be gro growing companies, and I think kind of, the, kind of the trick is figuring out who they are and finding them and, and plugging them into the city's infrastructure for employment and services. Mark, one of the, the issues we've been also talking about, obviously, is it's not only a, a jobs program, but we have to have some ancillary support for the working poor and actually people of moderate means, and one particular area is health insurance. How does that affect, first of all, the low-wage workers in terms of accessing adequate health care? And specifically, how would it affect the manufacturing sector? How many of them are insured? Well, most people in our society get health insurance through their work. Right. And when you lose your work, you tend to lose your health insurance. You have to be very poor to qualify for Medicaid or Family Health Plus here in New York State. So we're going to have more uninsured in, in New York City. Um, that creates a burden on the hospitals. It creates a particular burden on the city's public hospitals. Um, so, and that, again, gets us back to the city budget and the demands on the budget and the quality of life for everyone in the city as uh, we have greater need and fewer resources to meet that need. In the manufacturing sector, how is health insurance? How is that uh, being supplied? I would say about half the workers have health insurance, but that's, and that's because they're unionized workers. That's huge, though. So you have 100,000 people who are uninsured or have to find it, other forms of insurance. It sounds a little high, but I think that's probably, that's right. And is there any initiative going on, uh, any discussions in the manufacturing sector as to how they're going to deal with, to be in the manufacturing, I assume, your, your, your potential risk for uh, medical problems may be a little higher, though, I don't know, having sit, sat in front of a computer screen for a while, I, I, there are right. medical problems, but still, uh, is there any discussion of how that might be provided to people? Uh, not specifically around health insurance, but I think the issue you're getting at is how the city allocates its economic development resources and really working with kind of the high road entrepreneurs. And maybe we should be focusing much more of our attention and resources on companies that are willing to engage in that kind of dialogue. Are there any particular regions of the city that were, would be particularly um, open to having further industrial development? I mean, the, the notion of putting it in, you know, certain parts of Brooklyn or Manhattan seem sort of ludicrous. Where, where would new businesses go? Well, I think it's really a question of retaining the space that we now have. And actually, if you look at all the community-based planning initiatives that are occurring throughout the city, whether it's in Sunset Park or it's in Williamsburg or it's in the Bronx, the vast majority of them seek to retain what industry they have. This is, you know, under the city's uh, charter. Um, most of the community-based groups that we, we've worked with want to retain manufacturing because it's keeping jobs local sure. and people walk to work. If you go to Sunset Park or if you go to North Absolutely. Brooklyn, any, a very high percentage of people walk to work. Do you have any uh, idea before we close about uh, the manufacturing sector employs the 200,000? What is the spin-off economic uh, uh, impact of that kind of infusion? It's very, very high. Manufacturing has one of the highest um, multiplier <coughs> effects. For every hundred jobs kept in New hundred manufacturing jobs kept in New York City, it generates another 77 jobs in other sectors of the economy. And talking about this, what about, I, we've obviously seen Silicon Valley, though everyone is, you know, whether that's a good idea anymore and what's happening around the Boston area. Could some high-tech, uh, high-skilled uh, manufacturing be brought to New York and, and thrive? There's a tremendous amount of high-tech manufacturing that goes on here. But high-tech or artisan, you know, it, it doesn't matter as long as they're meeting the needs of their niche. My thanks to Adam and Mark for joining us today. There are many New Yorkers whose lives have been impacted by the events of September 11th. For those also caught up in the economic downturn, the problem is made even worse. 
Just as we make plans to rebuild the area around the World Trade Center, we must also devise comprehensive programs to help rebuild the lives of all people from all communities. Working people need to get back to work. I'm David R. Jones of the Community Service Society. Thank you for watching The Urban Agenda. Thank you.